Good morning. Here are the Sanibel Island updates as of November 1st, 2022, day 34 of hurricane recovery. Sanibel Causeway update. DOT is starting phase two of the causeway construction, which is permanent repair. The project manager is finalizing the design. She is assuring everyone that the visual design of the bridge will remain very similar to what it looked like before the hurricane. The differences will be behind the scenes with more resilient construction materials. The construction goal is to have the causeway project completed by October 1st, 2023. The East Periwinkle Way Bridge Update DOT has taken over the bridge repair. Materials have been ordered. Construction should start next week. Once the construction starts, the repair work should be done within two weeks. The Island Water Update Water has been reconnected to around 3,000 properties. The Island Waters office reopened last week, so they are available for any questions during the day. The boil order is still in effect. LCEC, 1,485 affidavits from the City Council have been received by LCEC. Those affidavits mean that your building is safe to have your electricity reconnected. 970 properties have been energized. Due to issues around some houses, like down power lines, etc., some houses can't be re-energized re until the surrounding LCEC issues have been fixed. LCEC is working on fixing those issues as quickly as they can. Public Works Update. For the sanitary sewer system, all lift stations are operational, so it is okay to start running your dishwasher, washing machine, etc. All October sewer fees for residents and commercial customers will be waived. Fire District Update. Fire totals since Hurricane Ian. There have been six fire structures with a complete loss, four electrical vehicle fires, and two electrical bike fires. The biggest fire was 32 golf carts caught fire at the Dunes Golf Course. That cause was again due to electric batteries. I'm seeing a pattern here. Perhaps electric vehicles are not a good idea for salt water flood prone areas. The Florida Department of Health in Lee County's swim advisory is still in effect. The advisory is to please do not swim in the ocean in the hurricane affected areas. Uh, I think this is common sense, but you would be surprised how many vacationers in Fort Myers have been getting into the ocean. Debris, pollution, pollution, and bacteria are still an issue. As I mentioned in an earlier update, red tide is starting to bloom. No respiratory issues yet reported in Lee County. I mentioned vacationers in Fort Myers. Technically, Sanibel Island is the only island in the area closed off to vacationers. You could go to Fort Myers Beach, you could go to Pine Island, you could, uh, it's not recommended and they are discouraging it, but they're not stopping vacationers from going. And so yes, there are still people going to Fort Myers for vacation and getting into the ocean. Um, it's just, I shake my head every time I see a video. I, I wish people had a little more common sense. The city passed the emergency ordinance 22-011 to allow RVs and trailers on private property for 180 days with the potential of another 180 day extension. Residents will need to file for a temporary use permit. Only the homeowner and household members will be allowed to stay in the RVs. Homeowners cannot rent out their RVs to contractors. The RV and trailer or trailer have to be wheelbased and freestanding. No decks no porches are allowed to be attached while it is parked on homeowners property. The city also passed the emergency ordinance 22-021 to allow temporary structures like RVs, trailers, food trucks, and temporary sheds on commercial property to allow businesses to continue to operate. Only existing businesses are allowed to apply for these temporary use permits business owners and employees or any other individuals are not allowed to reside in these temporary structures on commercial property. Thanks for listening.